Karthik Pandey here from Indian VFX School and in this video we are going to talk about how to resume simulations inside of Houdini. So this is something which a lot of people don't know about and a lot of people don't use this uh, and the reason is because there's like a lot of problems which can occur and you know there there have been some Houdini versions where you know this thing uh, didn't used to work that well but finally I've seen like the latest version this is like quite stable and also uh, you know like i've found some uh, techniques by which uh, which you can follow and i don't think you will have any kind of issues while you know uh, like resuming a simulation okay so i don't see a lot of information and a lot of uh, talks about this thing online and i feel like this is something which is like really important okay and there's like no proper documentation or any tutorial out there for this so i decided to make this and show like you know uh, so previously I used to like just do one simulation at a time I will try to uh, you know completely finish and but recently I had a project where the simulation time is like exceeding four to five days and no matter what you do you know if you just if you just rely on one PC you'll have to you know take it off so I found this very necessary to do okay so if we have the ability to like resume the simulations that will make our life really easy okay so here we just have a very simple uh, simulation going on so if you if you don't know about these flip simulations you can just go to our channel and look at our some very basic videos about flip simulations we have completely beginner to the uh, quite intermediate level uh, tutorials okay so if you look over here we just have a sphere points from volume we nulled it out and we are just importing it over here and now we are just doing this simulation okay so let's see uh, how to s first of all we'll have to cache it out so let's come over here and i'm using the latest version of the hoodney which is like 19.5.435 uh, so make sure you are on the same version if you don't want to have any problems so let's use the uh, dop import fields in order to like bring out our data from the sop level to sorry from the top level to the sop level okay and let's paste our dop network path and let's choose the flip flute okay so this way we will have the simulation and if you have any static object or something you can just go into this dop node and just choose the flip object so that it won't bring any static object with itself okay so now I'll just use a fluid compress. So fluid compress is like uh, really important, especially if you want to like, you know, uh, like decrease the size of your simulation. Okay. So let's do a copy parameter and just paste the relative references in the particle separation. Once again, if you don't know about these things, just follow along our basic tutorials. Okay. And now let's do a file cache. Okay. And I'll change it to the explicit using the old method go to the desktop and I already have a folder okay I think I don't yeah I do have a folder over here and I'll just delete uh, okay let me just open it here okay so I'll make a new folder over here and I'll call it cache okay and I'll come over here and I'll type dollar f dot bgeo.sc so you need to remember like uh, while typing dot bgeo.sc we are saving the compressed file cache okay and these extensions are like really important and we'll see like how they are important okay so just click on accept and i'll just increase the uh, resolution for our flip okay and just go to this dot net and it's really a good idea to like really decrease this value so that you know it doesn't store a lot of data in our ram okay so i'll just save the file and i click on this save to disk and let's see what happens so if i go into this cache folder you can see it's saving all the frames and <clears throat> let's say if i stop the simulation and that's it now we there is no way to like you know continue our simulation from where we have left off and the reason for that is because as i told you when we were saving this file in this dot bg.sc format it's a compressed cache okay so it's like saving lots of disk space but at the same time it also removes lots of information from the simulation which is needed in order to continue the simulation so that means you know uh, let's say if we if we like you know if we save this in dollar f dot sim which is .sim format 
वी कैन एनी टाइम कंटिन्यू दिस सिमुलेशन वेर एवर वी हैव लेफ्ट ऑफ बट द प्रॉब्लम इज द साइज फॉर द कैश विल गो अराउंड लाइक फाइव टू सिक्स टाइम्स मोर सो लेट्स इफ यू हैव अ सिमुलेशन ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड जी बीज एंड विद डॉट बीज डॉट एस सी विच इज लाइक क्वाइट नॉर्मल If you save it in dot sim format, it will go up to like one TB or so. So you know it's really hard to manage. And also when you import uh, that cache, again it takes the read and write speed of the disk. So you know it takes a lot of time. So what we do is you know uh, there's a thing which is known as checkpoints. So what checkpoints does is you know it will save your dot bju dot sc files, but at the same time. in some regular intervals which you mentioned like if you say 10 frames after every 10 frame it will save a dot sim file so that let's say we stop the simulation on the uh, 15th frame we can still continue the simulation from the 10th frame itself so let's see how we can do that so what i'll do is i'll just go back and i'll just delete all the cache files from here okay and let's go back into the uh cache simulation option and here you need to click on this save checkpoints okay so this is the first thing just go to the directory so i'll just go to this uh same folder i mean this could be anywhere and i'll make a new folder and i'll call it checkpoints okay all right so now let's save it and let's call it checkpoint and there's something which you need to be very careful about otherwise this thing won't work at all Just put an underscore and don't just write dollar f. No, you'll have to write dollar s f, where the s stands for simulation specific frames. Once again, uh, that is just how the dot net works. Okay, if you uh, if you want to save something from the dot net, especially for the checkpoint, you'll have to call it dollar s f. Otherwise, it will just save one frame and that's it. And then you'll have to make sure you type this dollar sorry dot s i m. Okay. So now it's going to save the uh, checkpoints in this folder, okay? And here we have this checkpoint trail length and checkpoint interval. So trail length suggests us like you know like how many uh, you know uh, checkpoints to keep in memory. Sorry, to keep in disk, okay? And checkpoint interval means after how many intervals will a new checkpoint be saved? So if I put this to ten, that means after every tenth frame. there will be a checkpoint which is going to get saved and after every 5 fr frames the previous um, checkpoint will be deleted so let's say if you set this to 5 so you know like after every uh, so that basically that, that just means like uh, there will only be 5 frames which will be saved and rest of the previous frames will be deleted so you know once again the reason for this is like to not increase the disk space okay so yeah let's give it a try so we'll go over here in this file cache and let's click on this save to disk and let's see what do we get so you can see this is saving the cache over here and if we go to the checkpoints you can see you know it's saving the 10th frame 20th frame 30th frame 40th frame 50th frame and now you will see it's going to remove the first frame okay yeah so it has removed the 20th uh, 10th frame again 30 40 50 60 and after the uh, 70th frame see it will remove the 28 frame okay so let's interrupt this okay and now you can see we have checkpoints for like 20 sorry 30 40 50 60 70 okay and if we go to our cache you can see the last frame that we have simulated is 74 so now there is something that you really need to take care of uh, and this is like the most important part if you uh, if you are not careful over here things might not work out so first thing we have the cache till 74th frame that doesn't means we can uh, you know like continue the simulation from the 74th frame it it all depends upon the checkpoint so the last checkpoint that we have is from the 78th frame so what you'll have to do you'll have to go back to the cache and delete all the frames after the 78th so just delete the 71 2 3 and 4 and now you can see uh, you know we have the 78th frame uh, the checkpoint the last checkpoint is like the 78th frame and the last cache is also the 70th so just make sure the last cache and the checkpoint is always same okay now if we go back so in this file cache now what you need to do is you just need to do one more thing okay just right click delete channels and i don't want everything to be saved from first frame instead i want it to start from 71 frame and it will do that because it's having the last checkpoint which can be loaded from here okay just make sure of one more thing just go to the simulation and click on this reset simulation and let's click on this save to disk and let's see what happens 
and now you can see it it's like resuming everything from the 70 to 70 uh, second frame and if we go to the cache you can see you know it has started to save everything after the 78th frame okay and if we go to the checkpoints again you will see it's saving the checkpoints however uh, i've seen one problem like when you save the checkpoints again it's not going to remove the previous checkpoint so that is completely fine you know we can take care of it so let's interrupt this and let's see if things are like even working or we are just doing everything in vain so let's use a particle fluid surface so that we can see the liquid again we can see the particles and let's change the convert output to the particles change this to velocity and let's see what do we get so we saved the initial data initial cache from 0 to the 70 which is fine and from 78th we resume the simulation and you can see you know things are working completely fine we don't have any kind of problem see so that is like really cool and we have the simulation till i guess 112th frame okay now let's see how we can continue so once again uh, even though our cache is set to you know the last frame that we have is like 112th but if we go into the checkpoints we only have 110th frame okay so as i told you just go to the last frame just go to the cache and delete all the frames after the checkpoints you know so if we have the checkpoints till 110th frame we need to keep the cache same okay now let's go back and over here we'll say 111 okay because it's going to load the 110th frame which is a valid dot sim file okay so yeah i think we can just go back here click on reset simulation okay and one more thing as i told you you can always go back to the checkpoints and you know we don't really need all of these just keep last two checkpoints and you know you don't really need any other okay now let's save the file and click save to disk and let's see what happens and now you can see once again it has resumed from the 110th frame and if we look at this we have the simulation ongoing from the 110th frame so that is really cool you know so i hope uh, everyone who has watched this video will be able to you know utilize this in your projects and this is like really a lifesaver you know and i'm really surprised to see like you know not a lot of people are using this even i was not using this because you know every time i used this there was some or the other problem and now finally i have figured out some ways you know which will let us save this okay so let's pause this video and you know let's complete the simulation and let's see how it goes all right so the simulation is completely done and let's see what we have now so you can see we interrupted the simulation like around three times but we have a complete simulation over here and that is like really cool okay so yeah that is it i hope uh, you found this video useful if you want to have more awesome stuff you can go to our website and check out our uh, free tutorials also if you want to learn hoodney or any other softwares which are into the vfx industry you can always go to our website look at the courses and contact us okay so that's it for the video and let's meet in the next video thank you bye bye